Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Raoul Kushwa. How are you today? I'm good. How are you, Tracy? And of course, Predict Medix has got, you know, a hot and intense group of shareholders that follow you daily, I know, because uh, they send me a lot of emails. So let's just, I'm grateful to have you to ask you the questions they're sending to me. So I think in reading their emails, uh, Raul, I'm seeing a lot of misunderstandings and what I thought was a tremendously positive corporate update. Why don't we start there? Oh, absolutely. So I think uh, one of the areas where there may be a bit of a confusion is uh, a lot of people just assume that with our technology, it's just the underlying AI software, which you can just plug it into anything and off we go. But it is not that straightforward because if you have been following what we have been deploying, especially like the deployment we did at Flowwater, it's really a structure which looks a lot similar to a metal detector. And uh, as people are passing through, uh, the decision is made in a split second and the outcome is in a format of a red or a green light. So there is, in fact, a proprietary hardware configuration that comes into play when these structures are being deployed. It's not just about the multispectral camera. There are actually several other sensors. There are uh, microprocessors and, of course, a lot of different components which are configured in a manner, as I said, that's proprietary to us. And as we started off at deployments, I mean, one of the things we did encounter that there are certain supply chain issues when it comes to hardware. So of course, things that we thought would be readily available tomorrow, even though they were promised, well, it just didn't happen. And that's just part of the uh, pandemic that we are in the midst of. I mean, the supply chains have been disrupted. And along with that, once you get the hardware and the software in play, and as you're deploying these units, you actually need an expert engineer to go down to the site to configure the units, to service them, and so these engineers have to be trained in the technology. So there is a big educational edu educational component that's there. And of course, we as an organization had to track, had to pretty much take care of these different aspects to ensure we can have success, successful deployments. And that's what we have been really busy with with the past few weeks. And now I'm glad to say that uh, the entire process from A to Z has been completely mapped out. We have, um, again, I mean, uh, now the units can be easily fabricated. We have a team of engineers that are being trained on our technology that can support the deployment, that can service the units. And uh, that's where, as we move on to the new year, we are quite confident that there are going to be a lot, there are going to be lots and lots of exciting developments which we will be sharing with the markets and shareholders. And of course, if you're new to Predict Medix, you should just take a look at the news flow to appreciate how incredibly competent this senior management team is for getting things done. So with regards to your last answer, um, I know when I was reading your corporate update, you were discussing specifically the commercialization of infectious disease screening that you've just answered, uh, and the remote patient monitoring platform uh, and mobile mobile well-being. Um, did you want to add anything further on that particular topic or did that pretty much bring us up to speed? Yeah, sure, I'll add something to it. So when it comes to mobile well-being, I mean, a lot of people just assume that it's another telehealth or a telemedicine platform. And I think that's where it's important for everyone to understand what mobile well-being is all about. Yes, it is in the telehealth and telemedicine business, but it does more than that. It does something which is referred to as remote patient monitoring. So uh, let's say I'm a patient who's being quarantined right now. I actually get a wearable from Predict Medics. I keep it on and what happens is on a daily basis, all my vital parameters are uploaded onto the system. And there is actually a healthcare provider on the other end who can not only provide me with a telehealth console, but they actually have access to all this data. So there is an active remote patient monitoring which is going on. And um, over the past few weeks, uh, we have been developing on at certain modules or we have been adding certain modules to our mobile well-being platform because the two markets that we are targeting is, of course, clinical trials and uh, long-term care. So now when we look at clinical trials, especially in today's environment, that, um, uh, that aspect where you would have a physician or a nurse go down and see every single participant, well, that just cannot happen. 
And that's where FDA now they have a very strong guidance, in which in a way is promoting remote patient monitoring. And that's where technologies like what we have come to the forefront. So now let's say you're a pharmaceutical player or a vaccine manufacturer, you start off with a clinical trial. So what happens is every participant gets a variable from Predict Medics. And with this variable, the data is seamlessly uploaded onto the Predict Medics portal, which now as a vaccine or a manufacturer, or as a pharma client, you have access to all that data. You can review the data and you can make sure there's an aberration things can be addressed right away. If we need to make sure there's a physician consult, it can happen right on the spot. And that's the value proposition that mobile wellbeing is bringing to telehealth with its remote patient monitoring. Um, along with that, of course, when you look at the uh, long-term care, I mean, we have been uh, able to see for the past few weeks um, areas which perhaps were not really focused on back in the day for if that was done, we wouldn't be dealing with the issues that we have had because of COVID-19. And uh, mobile well-being pretty much takes care of it. It brings the care factor into long-term care. And with the remote patient monitoring functionality, along with telehealth and telemedicine, I think it's something which is well-suited, not just for now, but also as we move forward and as there is more acceptance of technology, this is actually more of a long-term play, even with mobile well-being. So right now, we are integrating a lot of cutting-edge variables to our technology. We are in discussions with some very large players for mass commercialization of our mobile well-being platform. And that's where we feel that in Q1 of next year, we not only are we going to be launching our platform, but there will be some significant business development initiatives around mobile well-being. Well, I have to tell you, that is incredibly exciting. So I can see now why Accenture has published a paper. It's a paper, correct? Where they've highlighted how you're being so innovative in coping with COVID-19. We were just discussing this before we went on to this interview. I would love for you to comment on how this paper actually came to be. And for all of you Investor Intel audience members out there, we will have a link under this video at this time on how you can access this paper. Arul, could you tell us a little bit more about this, please? Well, absolutely. So the way how it came about, I wake up one morning and I see a text message from one of our shareholders that, did you see this? And I'm like, okay, what is this all about? It's a link to one of Accenture Health's papers. I click on it. I'm like, oh, they're talking about Predict Medics. <laughs> so for people who don't know, I mean, Accenture, again, it's one of the largest consulting firms on a global scale. Market cap over 100 million dollars. And uh, in that article that they talked about for uh, pertaining to disruptive technologies that are being developed to assist with the pandemic, they talked about three entities and Predict Medics was one of the companies. I think, um, I mean, it was definitely a big confidence booster for the team of Predict Medics, especially when you have an independent organization writing about your technology. And I think at the same time, it should indicate to shareholders that not only are our technologies disruptive, but we are clearly in a market segment, which is not only ballooning right now, but is going to be huge as time goes by. Of course, you know, I picked up the phone recently and called you and said, you've just announced a partnership with one of the fastest rising, you know, esports companies. Explain this to me. Um, you've got a partnership to develop tools for clinical trials. I'd love for us to for you to walk us through that. Oh, absolutely. So, uh, you know, as I was talking about uh, mobile well-being and the remote patient monitoring component for clinical trials, now the other aspect of ensuring that participants adhere to daily patient monitoring is you have to incentivize them. And that's where having an excellent reward system comes into play. Versus, uh, again, uh, they excel at what they do. They have a great rewards platform, which we are leveraging to provide those incentives to the patients that are going to be using remote patient monitoring. So, Raul, tell me, you know, I, I tell you, every time I go and review what Predict Medics is doing, it's like every other minute I'm getting an update from our team with, have you seen the latest Predict Medics uh, news? Uh, dare I ask you what we should anticipate in this upcoming month or two, other than it sounds to me like we are looking forward to some big news. And for any of you out there looking into Predict Medics, some of your partners, I don't think people appreciate, are multi-billion dollar market cap size companies in India. 
No, absolutely. So uh, again, it just uh, brings down to what is Predict Medics all about. So we have a few verticals that we are working in. I mean, one is, of course, um, impairment technologies to identify cannabis and alcohol impairment. Then there is the uh, infectious disease technology, which is, I believe, very timely for the current pandemic. And along with that, we are developing technologies to uh, target mental health disorders. And then, of course, there is the remote patient monitoring and telehealth platform uh, mobile well-being. And right now, if I can say, um, uh, again, just based on what is put out as a corporate update, uh, I can say all of our engines are firing right now. And um, we are looking towards uh, a great 2021, which is going to be filled with a lot of exciting developments on the front of technology, strategic partnerships, and also business development. Well, Raul, as always, what a pleasure it is. You're, you always leave me inspired and energized and wondering how you do it all in one day. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Tracy.